Say shalom to all my Israelite brothers and sisters. I want to say shalom to all my brothers and sisters. Those that are near and those that are far off. Shalom. I'm kind of stuck right now. Because there is much to be covered on bringing some understanding to this subject. Uh, the continuation of the video that was done yesterday dealing with the Christian factor and Israelite heritage factor. So, today we're going to look at some other things again. Can't stress these things enough. How important identification is. If you don't think identification is important, I dare you to leave your wallet at home. I bet any kind of money if somebody left their wallet at home with their identification in it, that they would stop what they're doing. They could be two hours out, but they'll turn around and go back and get it. That's how you know when you're in religion because religion will try to make you feel like don't nothing matter. But I dare somebody to leave their ID. I guarantee you, I guarantee you you're going to turn around and go get it. It matters. Everything matters. You think you're going to go jump on the plane, you better be able to identify yourself. You think you get ready to, uh, you get stopped by the police, you better be able to identify yourself. You go to use a credit card, you better be able to identify yourself. You try to draw your own money out of the bank, you better be able to identify who you are. Now, you, and, and, that's, and that's the whole thing about the lies of Christianity, is that they made you feel like didn't nothing matter but the Messiah, that the Messiah died. As though he died for a Gentile. And then they made it seem like that didn't matter. Yeah, you see? Only Gentile that the Messiah died for is the one that came up under the umbrella of the Israelite. You're not going to change the Bible. I wouldn't care what cemetery or what theology school you went to. You're not going to change the scriptures. And ain't no Gentile can comprehend the scriptures in its proper context. I wouldn't care which one of them it was. So when you look at Benny Hinn and Creflo Dollar and T.D. Jakes and uh, uh, um, Gino Jennings. Come on. I ain't that thinking dude, about that But dude. I mean, that he's dude sick. got a wild philosophy of yeah, doctrine. But, yeah, doctrine is he's a sick dude. You know, but like I said, they all have sat up on, at the feet of heathens. But I was saying Creflo Dollar and what's the one that Creflo Dollar come up on? Boy. No, 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 it's the white boy. Oh. Oh. What is that dang on the sucker? No. He's the first one to start getting the planes. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he got Cref that, uh, Creflo Dollar. That little funny green. Talk just like him. Talk just like him. But see all these brothers learned sitting at the feet of heathens. Joyce Myers. Joyce Joel, Myers, Joel John o Hagee, Joe Osteen. This is Christianity. Not what you call. That's not, you know, what you call Christianity is not Christianity. I know what our brothers and sisters mean when they say Christianity. But what was for a Gentile have never been for an Israelite. Even though the Israelite thought that it was for him. Let me ask you a question. So, is Christianity... A form of uh, it's a doctrine of depths. That's what it is. You know, what I'm that's saying? why so the Messiah is a form of uh, satanic worship. Well, that's why the Messiah say in First John, second chapter. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Don't let your label send you to hell. Don't let your label make you go against the things that the scripture are saying. That's the point where I'm at. I want to show brothers and sisters that what you say you believe in.
and opposes the scripture. It don't go hand in hand with it. So now we're not talking about your faith and your belief in the Messiah. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the institutionalized religion that's controlling the mindsets of the Father's people and turning them against Him. So, I'm just tagging a few people because these are some important messages that's coming up. You know, the Bible said many going to come from the East and the West and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. The scripture says that many shall come in the last days saying, Lord, Lord. Who calls him Lord? Who calls the most high Lord? Saying, Lord, Lord, did not we preach in thy name? Who doing the preaching? Did not we cast out devils? Who's casting out devils? And did not we do many wonderful works? Who's doing many wonderful works? I tell you who it is. It is them that are up under the umbrella of the Christian church. And he shall reply, I never knew you. Depart from me. You see, because people genuinely thought that they were serving the Most High and doing the right thing. He said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. And to be a worker of iniquity means that you are a lawless one. You are one that had declared, shut your door, that the law of the Most High is done away with and don't matter, and that the Father don't have a righteous standard for living in the earth. Now, let me say what I'm not saying before I say what I am saying. My brothers and sisters, that are in church, that are in Christianity. I am not declaring that you are deliberately or foully entangling up into something that's no good. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that I understand that the vast majority of my brothers and sisters, just like myself, when I was in church, had a genuine spirit and a genuine heart for the Most High. And the Most High knows and understands that. And so he blesses you, even in the midst of ignorance. So let's be clear on that. I also am not being hard on Christianity as, as an idolatrous religion for this reason. Because... I thank the Most High for the church because it was the vehicle to which the Most High would use to keep his people connected to what was rightfully theirs. And that was the Holy Scriptures. I do apologize for that. Yeah, I need some gas. gas yeah, I need some gas. Yeah. You need any gas in that can? We do. Huh? We do. In the big can and the little can. Right. Just put it in the big can. What do you like, $5? Uh, put it in the trunk? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, oh. so. So, because many times when we start talking about Christianity, It's, I would declare a false prophet the Father starts showing me truth. I was declared a false prophet by the pastor of my church. And the pastor of my church, we was like father and son. You know, we was real close. The only thing about it is that the Father starts showing me things in scriptures and those things coming out. They started too long. They started too long. Too long pressure on that relationship and at last end the whole church turned against me as though I'd done something wrong to them when I really didn't and it was just that it was just that the pastor couldn't receive what was being given to me 
later on in life I've come to understand that I could have maintained peace because it never was my responsibility to try and share with the older man what the father was showing to me. I learned that. I learned that what the scripture means that that sharing certain things with certain people you can incur injury to yourself and it never was meant for the child to teach the instructor. You see, he giving the parents everything that they needed to preserve us. And so I drew a wedge with what I was learning between the pastor and I. And at the end of it, I was declared a false prophet. Not just in my church, but all around town. Because he was a popular pastor too, you know. And so to all of his friends, I became a false prophet. And, and you know what? I wasn't worthy to go and speak in nobody's church. You know what I mean? Because that's how they operated. And this is another thing about Christianity that our brothers and sisters don't understand. When we look at the book of Revelations in the second chapter, let's go there right quick. And I'm telling you, my Christian brothers and sisters, we can have dialogue. We can have dialogue and we can talk because unless we have dialogue, what's going to happen is that y'all going to do what I watch many of our other brothers and sisters do when I was in church. Rather than having dialogue and getting in the scriptures to determine whether something is true or not, you just get angry, get an attitude and draw a wedge between your brother and then go out and see ill of him when really it's you that's wrong. I'm challenging my brothers and sisters that if you come about something that you think that that uh was not right, that's chopping. But I'm gonna show you something else dealing with the Christian church. I think that's 15. Okay. Verse 14 says, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them there that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication. Now, <clears throat> this is Christianity. He is dealing with the church, which is true Israel, to turn from their wicked ways. He said, one of the things that I have against you is that you have, you have the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam, who caused Balak to, uh, to cast stumbling blocks before the children of Israel. How did they cast stumbling blocks? They came along and declared that there was no dietary law. And they began to eat things that were sacrificed unto idols. And, and God smited them for that. It, it was a stumbling block. He said, he said, and then you also called them to fornicate. Because when Balaam couldn't curse the children of Israel, uh, Balak couldn't curse the children of Israel, Balaam told him, he said, okay, well, well, go over there and take now your most beautiful women and take them over there and let them become a stumbling block to the men of Israel. And this is how the men of Israel fail. This is how they got us to go against ourselves. And they're doing the same thing right now. Because through these Christian institutions and all of these things, it's the religious organizations that's fueling the things in the world. You see? And, and, and Balak is still casting the stumbling block before the children of Israel. You see? They, they take down your most beautiful women. Hey man, give me one of them out of there. Give me one of the Gatorades out of there. You want me to go get your cup, man? Oh, uh, no, nah, I don't need no cup, though. Damn, hey, but you got, did you put that ice in? I got this, I bought the cup, so I got the ice in there. Oh, man. That's cool. Just give me one of them Gatorades, you'll be cool. Yeah, so Balak, Balak, they doing the same thing now. Balak is still, you see, the doctrine of Baal is lawlessness. This is what, see, see, this, I'm telling you, these are the things that you don't understand about what you're participating in because you don't understand the scripture. The doctrine of Balaam is lawlessness. 
If you declare that you ain't come on Jason, come on, tighten up, man. Ah oh, man, I left it. It's the gas tank on. Yeah. Listen, if you if you up under anybody that tells you that Christ fulfilled the law, you are under the doctrine <coughs> of Balaam. And you don't even know it. And Balak casting stumbling blocks before you. Because you want to see where your married couples are? Your mixed married couples are? You want to see where they're at? Get up and go to your local mega church and you'll find them right there. Because that's where all of this lawlessness is sanctioned at. That, that is the place where it's being fueled from. Now, those are two ways. Because as we said, the religious organizations are fueling the thing in this world. They're fueling the laws in this world. Man, y'all can say what y'all want to say, but Christianity is behind homosexuality being legalized, same-sex marriage. It's the preachers and it's the pastors that's coming forth to declare that those things are good. It's your Christians, your pale-faced Gentiles that were never given no rules to live by. And you have been following them because you were taught that you were them. And they taught you that they were you. And unless you can stand up and identify yourself, then you stand to be destroyed right along with them. Because the fathers... Father's word ain't gonna change. Now, let's go keep reading. Verse 15. Where you at? On what channel? If you up under anybody that's telling you that you no longer under any type of law, you in trouble. Nah, you up there. You're in the doctrine of Balaam. Revelations 2, 15. So as thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. He said not only, not only, not only does the Christian church operate in the doctrine of Balaam in lawlessness, declaring that Christ fulfilled the law and the law was done away with the law and the prophet. Not only are they spewing from the pulpits the doctrine of Balaam, but they also are moving by the doctrine of Balaam that put a stumbling block before the children of Israel when it told them it was all right to have mixed marriages and it was all right for people to gay people to be married it was all right people to be and all of that stuff not only is they moving by the doctrine of Balak also <coughs> but they also hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which things I hate which things I hate now, if you are in church and you are not aware of these scriptures, how do you know that what you operating by is not the very thing that the Most High and His glorious Son hates? How many of the people do you think that are in the Christian church can tell you what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is? And if it's something in the scripture that Messiah says He hates, don't you think you ought to know what it is? Okay. Okay. Now, if you on here, you don't know what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is, and you want to know what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is, put a seven up on the screen. Come on. Because I'm not just going to be releasing information to them that ain't hungry and thirsting after nothing. All right, there we go, brothers. 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 That's what we're talking about. We're talking about learning. Because we will only do better as we learn better. And before you can learn, you must be able to identify with the fact that there are some things that you don't know. Now, when the Messiah says he hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans comes from 
a guy that they classified as a deacon or saint of some sort by the name of Nicholas. Okay? Now, the, the first half of his name, Nico, is dealing with being a victor of the people. Somebody that's lording over the people. The second half of his name is dealing with the people. The laity. The laity. Nicolaitans. The victor of the laity. A victor of the people. What the Nicolaitans was. Nicolaitans was a stair-step hierarchical system. Whereby men had to go through a chain of command to reach the most high. This is why you got preachers and pastors in the pulpit that say when God want to speak to you, he'll speak directly through his man and then his man will speak to you. Well, that's complete foolishness. So in the church organization, Roman Catholicism, because what our brothers in Christianity don't understand is that the ROC, Roman Catholic Church, is what you are. If you say that you are a Christian, you are in Catholicism because Christianity is the daughter that was born to this mother harlot. But everybody knows that the popes and the cardinals and the bishops and the people at the Vatican worship Lucifer. And Christianity is the daughter that was born to her, steeped in paganism. And it's what stops Israel from rising. And if Israel's going to rise, that religious institution has to be renounced by Israel and destroyed. So, so you got the popes. Then you got the cardinals. Then you got all of these. You know, you got all of these. You got a hierarchical system. Whereby men had to go through each one of these chains, climbing a ladder, and then get to the Pope and say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Wow. Blasphemy. Blasphemy to the, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You see, but see, because we, because we are the tentacles, the little, the little local black churches are the tentacles of Roman Catholicism and don't realize it because you've been deceived, but you're up under the same doctrines. See? Because if you know. think that it's all right when y'all get together to have dinner and then you got pork chops and hog moths and pig feet and all of that down there and you asking the Father to bless your food, you are not talking to the most high God of heaven and earth. Why would he bless something that he told you not to eat? You see? That's lawlessness. That's the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Now listen. Paul said, Stand fast in the liberty, in the freedom, where you've been made free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage that you was once in. What was the yoke of bondage? The yoke of bondage is that we were bound by the law of sin and death. And the Levitical priesthood could do nothing for us. So we had to go through the Levites and the priests. We had to go through the Levites and the sons of Aaron with a sacrifice in order for our sins to be atoned for. He said, be not entangled again with this yoke of bondage that you was once up under. We needed to go through somebody. There was a stair-step chain of command that we had to go through in order to get to the Father. We couldn't just approach him on our own. And, he, and Paul said, okay, understand this, that when Hamashiach sacrificed his life, the veil of the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom. Therefore, the Levitical priesthood ceased to exist. The stair-step hierarchical system ceased to exist. Now we had direct access. And then you, these religious organizations, the Pharisees and scribes, they went out there and built it up again. Because men love prohibitors. Why, when you got a problem, you got to call your pastor up. Why can't you call the father up? 
why can't you go and get in prayer? You see? Because you've been made to be that way. You don't have to study your Bible. You just listen to what your pastor say. Well, any pastor that don't teach you and instruct you in the ways of the scripture as it relates to personal accountability, you should run out of there. So, that's, that's one thing. So, now, these are falsehoods that are directly in the scripture. But now, guess what? Somebody is a beneficiary of these falsehoods. And somebody, these falsehoods, is to their demise. If you can discern the difference between who is the beneficiary of Christianity and who is the one that is seeking his demise, if you can draw a line of distinction between those two things and be able to identify who's benefiting and who ain't. You see? You can do like Mr. Hebrew said, put a seven up there. You see? Yeah. And our black pastors want to be, not all of them, not all of them, not all of them. I have to be very delicate, very careful about this subject because, you know, I got one of my brothers out there, man, and I know, man, you know what, the father done blessed him so, so wonderful, so wonderful from caring for, caring for people and stuff of that nature. It's not all of them. And we're not saying that it's such a bad thing. What we're saying is that even those that the Father had blessed with genuine hearts, he will only have mercy on them for so long before he challenged them to stand up and declare and identify who they are. Because when the Bible says that in the last days, Israel going to rise. <coughs> All of Israel that don't rise is going to be destroyed because they are choosing the systems of this world. So, my brothers, I love all of them, but I'm loving enough to tell them the truth. And they know we can sit down and talk, we can have dialogues. You can peek my brain. Ask me whatever question you want to. How I'll come arrive at this thought. Why I think like that. And I, you know what? I don't have nothing to tell you. Only thing I can do is open up the scripture. I'm going to show you why. We tell from some of our people that <coughs> they get real offended when you start talking about Christianity because they don't know. You do, man. They get sad. It's almost like fighting words. You see, they don't know. No. They don't know. They don't know. They, you know, it's like you never can build. They don't understand that the reason, the reason why they're in the condition that they're in is because the Father have had grace and mercy on them in the midst of their ignorance. That's what that is. He'd have had grace and mercy on them in the midst of their ignorance. And they think, and they've been deceived into to thinking that it's their good living. But yeah. not no good living. Yeah. You see? And I don't say this from somebody look on the outside uh, just looking for, for some Christians to slander. I say this from one that's from among you. Yeah. You see, my love, my love for the scripture and my love for the Most High, it went it went farther than my love for the organization. So, you know, forget the organization if it goes against the scripture. So, so but now, Gentiles are the beneficiaries of Christianity because Christianity helped them maintain the riches of this world by the suppressing of Israel. You see, as long as Israel can't identify himself as Jacob, then the Gentiles of this world, they stay rich. 
And they use the religious institutions of this world to suppress you. Because the only reason why you can't declare who you are or discern who you are is because of the religious institution and the education that you have received at the hand of the heathen. That's why the scripture said, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. Choose none of his culture. For the customs thereof are vain. You see? So, I don't know if, you know, it's just, what's going on? Y'all gotta rise up, man. Brothers, y'all gotta rise up. Y'all gotta rise up. Y'all gotta rise up. Well, we've been right, I'll try to out on our way to Jacksonville. To I'm not working in these right now. On our way but to I, Florida. I'll get, I get it together as soon as I get to the house. And see what we can come up with. We've got plenty of brothers <laughs> out here that are dealing with the churches. That are dealing with the churches. That are dealing with the pastors. That are dealing with the, the brothers. And... Uh, let me show you something. Turn to Romans 11 chapter. Yeah, so. Shalom, shalom, Brother Limele. Shalom, Sister Pam. Shalom, Sister Nita. Shalom, Tony. Yeah, because, um, have y'all noticed that? Our brothers and sisters that are in Christianity, they get mad, they get angry when you start talking about the truth of scripture because they've never been taught scripture and they don't know how to defend what it is that they believe. Their, heart, their hearts are genuine and they don't understand that we're not talking about your faith. Your faith in God, your faith in Jesus, your faith in Hamashiach. We're not talking about that. Your faith in God and your faith in Hamashiach is between you and your God. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the falsehoods of the religious organization that you have come to believe in as truth. This is why 1 John 2nd chapter, verse 25 through 27 said, this is the promise that I have made you, even eternal life. Because of them that would seduce you, I am writing you this letter. That you need not that any man should teach you, but that the spirit you have received uh, and anointed, that the spirit will teach you and teach you all things because there is no lying in it. He said, I'm writing this letter concerning them who would seduce you. To be seduced is to have a spell cast on you. Do you know why you can't get your brothers and sisters out of Christianity? Because it is a seducing spirit. It is a spell that's been cast on them. Where they think that in order to renounce this religious institution, I now detach myself from the Most High and His Son. That is a spell that's being cast. Because if the Most High and His Son did not create the institution. Why would he cast you off if you detached yourself from something that was hindering you from serving his purpose and his will? See? But it's a spell being cast because they can't separate the Most High and Hamashiach. They can't separate him from the religion. You see? You see the deception? You see the spell? That you've attached a holy and a righteous God and his glorious son and sacrificed his life. You have attached him and joined him with a harlot. Can't even comprehend it. You see, we know you got faith in God. We're not talking about your faith. God. We're talking about if, the, if faith without works is dead. We're talking about your ability to be able to respond to the Father's word. Because when we show you the scripture, if you really have faith in God, why can't you operate by the scripture? No. So, let's start at the 11th verse. 
Romans 11 chapter verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. Holy Christian church. Holy. Let's get one thing straight. Let's get one thing straight. Negro that's calling yourself a Christian. Answer these questions that Paul the Israelite is asking. Paul, the one that everything you say you believe, everything that you are preaching, that you are, you're preaching it off of him. And you can't classify yourself as an Israelite, but you'll hold an Israelite up on a pedestal while you preach everything that he wrote down in his book. But you in denial of the fact. So you, Negro, that got the blood of Abraham, Isaac running through your face. You, Negro, the one that was sold into slavery. You, Negro, the one that was hung in trees, set on fire. You, Negro, the one that the Messiah himself said you was going to fall by the sword and be led into every nation as a slave. You, Negro, according to Joel, third chapter, you were the boy that they sold for a prostitute. There were the girls that they sold for wine and removed us far from our borders. You, Negro, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. You, Negro, that got put on ships and got off and then was put on auction box and sold for male and female slaves and no man has ever been able to deliver you out of that bondage. You, Negro, that's declared that you are a Christian. You answer these questions, Christian. I say then, have God cast away Have his God people? cast away his people? Because if God have not cast away his people and you are classifying yourself as somebody other than that, then you are finished. Because his people are never finished. Come on. God forbid. God forbid. For I also am an Israelite. I also am an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Of the tribe of Benjamin. You talking about, come on, Christian. Whose words are you using? When you get ready to paint a picture, where do it come from? Whose book do you use? Whose scriptures are you using? When you get ready to tell somebody about the goodness of the Most High, how you gonna do it? Who you gonna go to? to get it from and you can't you can't uh you in denial of who you are hello yeah but see the white boy is the beneficiary of it because he'll take and use something that don't belong to him and then use it on you oh oh i hope y'all can feel what's going what's being said he said look i'm an israelite a Israelite told you where he came from. And you content with calling yourself a Christian? Where's your Christian book at then? Where's your Christian scrolls at? If Christianity is this, that great, what do you have to use? You see, God never gave a Christian anything. Everything that the so-called Christian is operating on does not belong to him. Hello. Come on. Let's so, get to the scriptures. God have not cast away his people. God didn't cast away his people. Which he foreknew. Which he foreknew. Well, ye not what the scripture says, saith of uh, Elijah. Don't you know what the scriptures say of Elias? Uh, is that how you pronounce it? Elias? Elisha? Elias? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dug down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Mm -hmm. but, what say, but what say the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself Seven thousand men. I got thousands of men who have not bowed their knee, the 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 knee to the image of Baal. Mm -hmm. Even so, then at the at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. 
You see that? There's a remnant. So we don't expect everybody to receive. Everybody is not going to receive. Like we said, you know what? Many shall come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There is going to be a remnant. You see, real Israel is going to hear these messages and wake up and declare. That's me he's talking about. That's me that's written in the scripture. And they are going to, the word of God is going to override the religious institution. And the remnant is going to stand up and come out of it. But many won't. Well, verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of work? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, works is no more works. Mm -hmm. What then Israel have not obtained that which he speaketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. You see, you see the Lord shall smite you with madness and blindness. He said Israel didn't obtain, but the election did obtain it. Those that can respond to the scripture will obtain the promises of the Most High. Them that choose to hold on to the systems of this world, they will be destroyed. Ain't that what it say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're getting the opportunity right now. And I know it's difficult because there ain't never been no challenge that was worth anything that was not difficult. The Father back me into a corner to where I couldn't do nothing and said, yeah, now you make a choice. You make a choice of what you want to do. You either going to be a part of this and, and, and have to love people and the love of men, or you going to choose me. And I said, you know what? I choose the truth. Because according to the Ecclesiastes, and I think it's 19 chapter, it says the preacher the preacher sought out acceptable words. He sought the words of truth correctly. That's our responsibility. My responsibility is not to preach five more ways for you to have a better life in a fallen kingdom. My, 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 my objective is not to preach ten, ten things that can happen when you bring your tithe and your offering. Three ways to build your credit report. My job is not to teach that nonsense. What we got? Hey, according as it is written, God have given them the spirit of slumber. God has given our brothers the spirit of slumber. Eyes that they should not see. Eyes that they should not see. And ears that they should not, not hear. And ears that they should not hear. Unto this day. Unto this very day. You could show it to them in the scriptures. And they won't see it. You can speak it to them in the scriptures. And they won't hear it. It's because the father done that. He foreknew them. So, let's keep going. And David said, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Mm -hmm. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back all way. Eleven. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Now, that was the condition that Israel was in. But Paul said, now I say, have they stumbled that they should fall? And what he's asking, have Israel fallen to the place where they cannot rise again? God forbid. He said, God forbid. Because they will rise again. But rather through their salvation. No. No, through. My fault, my fault. Let me start off. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Now, you see this? He said, rather through their fall, salvation has come 
unto the Gentiles. So, when you want to see Christianity is dealing with Gentiles, let's see how the Gentiles have operated after the Israelites had taught them truth. They operate the same way now when we teach them how to sing. They put themselves up there as though and they lay claim to it as though it was theirs. When we teach them how to dance, they spotlight their own kind as though they invented it. Whatever it is that we come across, they come and we teach it to them and then they paint it to the world as though it was their own. Let's see how the Gentiles, the Christians, operated. Let's see how they appreciated the Israelites. Okay. Yep. He said, through their fall, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. You see, it didn't have nothing to do with the Father loving them. He said, I need to, I need to use something. For these hard-haired children of mine, so I'm gonna reach over here and get these uh to get these people, so that I can provoke my children to jealousy. I bet you any kind of money, you'll never hear Gentile, you'll never hear one of these Gentile pale faces preaching this right here. Twelve. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world. And the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles. So who's the beneficiary? What did Christianity produce? If the fall of Israel, what did the fall of Israel produce? Riches. It produced riches. Riches for who? For the Gentiles. It produced the riches of the Gentiles. And what else? And how do they maintain their riches? Through the fall. No. Through the diminishing? That's right. That when we fail... It produces riches for the Gentile. Because not only we lose our precious things, Solomon's gold, we we also went into slavery and began to work with for no pay. And it produced riches for the Gentiles. Okay, in order for them to stay rich, what has to happen? Read the scripture. Uh, they have to stay in a diminished state. In in order for the Gentiles to stay rich, Israel has to stay in a diminished place. Henceforth do you have Christianity. Because it causes you, your name, to cease from being in remembrance. And some of you Christian brothers out here that's pastoring, you've been duped. You've been Dude, you think because you got people following you and you got a nice little life and you got and you think that you got a part of this American dream, but what you don't understand is that you are the one that's helping to suppress and keep your people in diminished state. See? So who's benefiting from Christianity? It reduced the riches of the world. And the, the diminishing of Israel keeps the Gentiles rich. You, get you let every you let every Negro you let every sin of Abraham, Isaac, and Jake start walking out of churches, and we, we hooking ourselves up with each other on the umbrella of the Most High. What do you think gonna happen to this world? Gentiles, uh, organization, organized religion will fall. Now, let's keep going. Okay. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentile, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you, Gentiles, in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. He said he was what? He said he's the apostle. But uh, later on when we first read, what did he say about himself? 
He said he was an Israelite. He said, I, Ma, I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. And now he said, I'm the apostle to the Gentiles. So in, in other words, if it wasn't for me, the Israelite, you wouldn't be here in nothing. But I'm coming to you because I need to provoke my brothers to do something. Only thing that only thing we'll understand is that that what, what I bring you, you're gonna turn on me, and you're gonna use it against me. You're gonna use it against me. You're gonna take what's rightfully mine that I gave you to help raise my brothers. You're gonna take what's rightfully mine, and then you're gonna use it to put your foot on that. Come on, let's I go. Magnify, magnify mine up. Fourteen. If by any means I may provoke to emulation, emulation, them which are my flesh. You see, you see that, you see that line of distinction that Paul is drawing. He tells you he's dealing with the Gentiles. He declared who he was. He didn't say nothing about I'm no Christian. He understood who he was, understood what his purpose was. You need to understand who you are and understand what your purpose is. I also too am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah. The instructor, the kingdom that the Father put into the earth to teach these heathens his righteousness. Read that part again. Uh, okay. If by any means I may provoke to... He may provoke to emulation. Emulation. Them which are... My flesh. Now look at that line of distinction that's drawn again. That's where Christianity got you. Because they don't draw no lines of distinction. No specification. No clarification. I want you to think the Bible just talking to anybody. But he said, look at that line of distinction. Not only did he identify himself, he identified the ones to who he was talking to. And now he identified his brothers, them that are of his flesh. And I say some of them. Mm -hmm. For if the casting away of them be the reconcili reconciling reconciling mm -hmm. of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Mm -hmm. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, weren't grafted in among you. You see, some of the branches is broken off, Israel, when we fail. If you, pale-faced Gentile, being a wild olive tree, can be grafted in, and with them the partakers. And then now you partake of the root of the root and fatness of the olive tree. and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, there bears not the root. Now look at Paul's prophecy on the Gentiles. He said, "You a wild olive tree because you ain't had no laws, you ain't had no nothing. God never gave you nothing." He said, "Because Israel fell, you had the right to be grafted in, and now you have to become a partaker of the root." and the fatness of the olive tree. That means that whatever was, it was Israel's responsibility, it's yours. If Israel had to be up under the laws, you had to be up under the laws. If Israel had to be up under the statutes, you had to be up under the statutes. If Israel had to keep the feast days, the ceremony issues, the dietary laws, you had to keep them because you've been grafted in amongst the root and now you are a partaker of the fatness of the tree. He said, you pale-faced Gentile, you are up under the same thing that Israel is up under. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest the root. He said, but if you boast, if you boast, <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Okay. Sorry about that. Now, what was we at? Okay. So, so, so he said, if you boast against the natural branches, Paul prophesied to them what they was going to do. He said, 
This is what you'll do. But the root, but the root the 19. Oh, he said, if you boast against the natural branches, you don't bear. You don't bear the root. You don't bear nothing. Want me to read that again? Yeah, read it again. 18. These boast, are Gentiles, listen. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. He said, Gentile, if you ever boast against the natural branches, you don't bear the root. But the root thee. But the root thee. Now, if you take anything and disconnect it from the root, what's going on? You see, the Gentiles been at the ham of the Christian church all of this time, but they're dead. That's why they have no impact in the world. And so the only thing that their salvation produces is riches. That's why they worried about planes, trains, and automobiles. You don't bear no root because you boast against the children of Israel. When you did what 1 Maccabees 3rd chapter 48 verse said, and they laid open the books of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likenesses of, our, of their image. You boast against the natural branches when you took our holy scrolls and painted you and your children in there. You boast against the natural branches as you produce books and literature which you and your children in our place. You boast against the natural branches as you took Charleston, Heston, them, the white people, and everybody else and start producing Hollywood movies portraying the Hebrew people, the descendants of the slaves that were on the walls of Egypt. You boast against the natural branches when you declared that Israel was done away with and the church was now the spiritual Israel. He said, and if you did those things, you don't bear no root. You don't have nothing. You are steeped in wickedness. And so the only thing that your Christianity has is salvation, is the riches of this world. And this is the scripture that we are reading. Nice. That will say then, the branches were broken off. That I may be grafted in. You will say the branches was broken out. That I may be grafted in. Have anybody out there have ever been the church and ever heard anybody declare that the church was the spirit of Israel? I can't stand Facebook. I know how them Gentiles operate. My stuff freezing, it won't even move. You know what I mean? They wiggling wires on you and stuff. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that, boy. Yeah. I hate that. People just, just do me like that. Do me like that, man. <laughs> so, I'm telling you, so this is the scripture that we are reading. Because we want our brothers and sisters to understand that the descendants of slaves are the children of Israel. True children of the book. The Gentiles. Salvation is the richest of this world. And they boast against the natural branches by saying that the children of Israel was broken, was done away with, and they was the new spiritual Israel. Have you ever noticed that is one nation on the earth? that they say don't exist no more and it's one people on the earth that don't have no name you do the math you go figure it out <laughs> you know what i'm saying I'm finish reading this <laughs> yeah yeah finish reading 20. Yeah. well because of unbelief they were broken off because of unbelief israel was broken off <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, and thou standest by faith. Paul said because of uh, because of un unbelief, the Negro went into worldwide captivity because of unbelief because he fell down from the responsibility that the Most High had given him. But he, he said the Gentile to the pale 
face. He said, but you stand by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. He said, therefore, don't be high-minded, but fear the Lord. Because if it was not for the Israelites, there would be no such thing as a Gentile Christian. So you can't get prideful. And see, our Gentile Christian brothers have not done as they were supposed to do when the word said they were to be grafted in because they boasted against the natural branches and declared Israel was done away with and they was the spiritual Israel. Well, turn your book to Jeremiah 31. And let's see if what they said was true. Verse 35 through 37. Jeremiah 31, 35. Thus said the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day. Thus said the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day. And the ordinance of a moon of the moon and of the stars for a light by night. And he give the ordinance of the moon and the stars for a light by night. And you have to understand that the ordinances are law. Can never be done away with. Which divided the sea when the waves there thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Mm -hmm. 36. If thou ordinest depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. He said, Thus says the Most High that gives the sun for light by day and the moon and the stars for light by night who part the waves when sea roar he said if these ordinances should pass away from me then i will cause the seed of israel to cease from being a nation before me is the sun still hanging in the sky yeah. is the moon and the stars still coming up at night then you before. best believe that israel is still a, a nation before the eyes of the most high we might be scattered we might be scattered by lands, scattered in understanding, scattered by ideologies, but you better believe that we still exist before the eyes of the Lord as a nation of people. So ain't no, ain't no wicked, wicked, wicked spirit filled, pale faced Christian gonna ever come along and say that Israel been done away with. We are still on the earth because in order for the promise that the father made Abraham that, that in his seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. There had to be a physical seed of Israel on the earth to make those promises made manifest. You better stand up and identify who you are. Or you're going to perish with the heathens. And not a lot of these messages is to, is to my brothers, to my Christian brothers that need to take a second look at scripture. Because that's what we read. Take a second look at scripture. When we start looking at the Messiah, it said, Thou shalt call his name Yahushua, for he shall save his people from their sin. It said, His people. I drew a lot of distinction. It said, Them of my flesh, his people. It's not me for me to give the children's bread to the African or the Canaanite woman. It's not meat for me to give the children's bread unto the dogs, to the other, to the other nation nationality. You worship what you know not. We worship what we know. For salvation was committed to the kingdom that the Father put in the earth, and there there should be a kingdom of priests unto Him, a peculiar treasure. This is the book that we talking about. This is the Messiah that we talking about. Go not in the way of the Gentiles. Go rather ye to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. My message ain't for no Gentile. But my message is for any of our brothers that are still at the ham or up under the umbrella of the Gentile religious or institutions of the world. We talking about the Holy Scripture. 
This is not re religiosity that we're talking about. And that's where many of our brothers cross off at because you think that we're talking about religiosity when we're really talking about this Bible. So let's get in this Bible and go precept upon precept, line upon line, and get some understanding. So, you know, they boasted against the natural branches when they try to do away with us. But you can't do away with Israel. Now, how can that be? One nation out of all the other nations on the earth, one nation don't exist no more, and one people out of all the people on the earth, one people don't have no name. This is elementary. One people don't have no name. And the only reason why the other people, the other people have a name. You see, because Christian, Christianity is not a nationality. You can say, I'm a Christian, and that can identify you with whatever religious organization that you attach to. But who are you as a people? And you can't even begin to understand this unless you can identify with who you are. You see? Now, many of our brothers, they see things the way they see them because they look at the scripture through the eyes of Gentiles. They're not looking at the scripture through the eyes of Israel. And that's what makes the difference because the father never spoke to no Gentile. And if you are, if you are a Negro, if you are a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you are looking at the scripture through the eyes of a Gentile, then you live the life of a Gentile. You can't comprehend the scripture. You see? But the Father well, never showed them for you. What? That that we was just reading in Romans, mm -hmm. right there, isn't that because the Israelites have been absorbed into these Gentile kingdoms and now they in, 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 in their belief, they believe just like how we believe we are African Americans and yep. such, you know, because yep. we've been absorbed into society and given these things. So Paul went there not only talking to the Gentiles, but to those Israelites that believed they were Gentiles. Yeah, but see, in this particular case, mm -hmm. in this particular case, you see, he was dealing with both because he was making these Gentiles understand that it made no difference whether he was dealing with the Israelites that were behind him or that were in front of him. The idea of whether they had just fell away from the law in rebellion or whether they became a blended part of the culture and just didn't know it. It didn't matter. He was going to use the pale-faced Gentile as a means to provoke the Israelite. He is going to use those things to provoke his brothers on both sides to want to be a part or come back to their heritage. Some going to come back to their heritage and then others will come to understand that this is their heritage and that's not their culture. And the same thing we're doing right now because many of us was raised in church, raised in Christianity, raised like that and we became of that and we thought that was a part of our culture. We didn't understand that this was not our culture. And so some of us doing the same thing that Paul was doing. I try to provoke my brothers. Provoke them back to where they're supposed to be. Using the Gentile to do it. You see? Now in this case, Paul was going to use transferring a blessing on the Gentile to provoke the Israelites. Mm. In our day, we're using the wicked, the wicked lies of the Gentile to provoke our brothers out of these things. Show you the lies. So, so that's what it is, man. So it's strong meat. You want to go back to Romans? It's strong meat, but it's cool. No, I'm gonna end the video right there, I guess. Oh, okay. You got anything else you want to add? No, that's pretty good, man. I just, man.
I get some of that word up in you today. I just, the, the word <laughs> got to go out. You know that everybody not going to see. But I have some brothers out there, man, that I know. And some of it, some of it get. You know, it's just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I know it's one rough. Thing. I know it's rough, man. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to build with Christians, man, because it's such a You can't build with Christians. It's such a contending thing. Well, you well, know, you, what? know what? you know, because it seems like you run direct opposition, but y'all in the same doctrines, in the same book. But, but see, the thing is, is that the thing is, is that if you're looking at the book through the eyes of Gentiles, it's not comprehensible. That's like a student trying to look uh, through the well, teacher's then, manual. Well, then that's like saying if you're looking through the eyes of a with a perspective of Christianity. Yeah. Because Gentiles, that's what they didn't create. It was Christianity. Yeah. So when you look and then at we it, think that we think that that's what we are. That's what, and I'm telling people all of the time. You know, I don't see how you can take such offense to something that's not even contained in the scripture. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah, how can yeah. you be so offended when I'm telling you <laughs> find me a word in scripture then? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Find me anywhere where the Messiah called it, where the, the Father spoke it, where the prophets seen it, where, you know, the prophets did see it. Well, where do they get the idea that the, uh, uh, that church has become spiritual Israel? What, what do they that, build that off that? Comes, of that? that comes from what Paul said. If you boast against the natural branches, this is what you say, that the natural branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. And that's where they get that from. Wow. So, you know, so that's what it is. But but my thing is that it's play time. Out. It's time for our brothers that are at the ham of Christian churches to be challenged. Stand up. Stand up and identify yourself. Identify yourself because we can prove that you are not no Christian. Why can't you accept it? Turn to John 8.44. John 8, 8 chapter started about the started about the 35th verse. John 8. Because I'm going to put on you Christian brothers what the Messiah put on them. Them so-called, they call themselves Jews. Them that said that they believed in him. If you really believe in him, you will hear his word. You said that like the 34th? John 8? Yeah, yeah. Start, start about verse 30. We're going to show you Christians. We're going to show you the people that was up under the umbrella of Israelites that came in, that followed the Messiah around everywhere, that learned from them, that had a made up mind that they was going to do something different. And many of our brothers, you up under the umbrella and you don't understand that you are in rebellion because you are not one of them. And you think that you're into some falsehood that you blended yourself into their world. When they care absolutely nothing about you, they are the ones that's putting the police on the street that's killing our people. They are the ones that's passing laws to keep our people impoverished. They are the ones that's getting wealthy off of the money that you spend. They are the ones that's supporting the synagogue of Satan that the Bible calls them that say that they are Jews. They are the ones that's supporting the people that's occupying our land right now. And you have the nerve enough to call yourself one of them gotta be out of your mind we got John 8 31 well, John 8 30 and he spake these words and he spake these words many believed on him he said many believed on him you know how many brothers and sisters we got say they to believe on the Messiah 31 then said Jesus to those Jews we believed on him. Then Jesus said to them Jews that believed on him. If ye continue in my word. If you continue in my word. Then are ye my disciples Then you are my indeed. disciples indeed. 32. And ye shall know the truth. 
and the truth shall make you free. Then you shall know the truth, and it's the truth that's going to make you free. If you continue in my word, why can't you understand our speech when it's the words that's coming out of the scripture? If you continue in his word, you shall be declared his disciple. 33. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and we were never, never in bondage to any man. You see pale face? Do you see the pale face? Because the children of Israel were in bondage their whole existence from the walls of Egypt to Babylonian to Assyrian to Greek to all the way to Roman. They said they were never in bondage to no man. Do you see the pale face Gentile now? Do you see the line of distinction that's drawn between the people in the scripture? Come on. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? How you gonna say we be free and we ain't never been in no bondage? 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. 35, and the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided ever. 36. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Mm -hmm. 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. I, I, I know you Abraham's seed. But what you got to under, understand is that Abraham had all kind of seed to come out of his blood. He had Isaac, he had Ishmael, them is two nations. He had Jacob, he had Esau, them is two nations. He said, I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you are not Israel because you never you already declared you've never been in bondage. I know you came from Abraham's loins, but you are not the one that's that's entitled to the promise of Abraham. But ye seek to kill me. Because you seeking to kill me. Because my words have no place in you. Hey, my word don't have no place in you. Now you want to kill me and this is how some of our brothers is because they look at the scripture through the eyes of Gentiles and they can't comprehend the scripture so when the true Israelite the blood ball see of Abraham stand up and start handling what is rightfully his to handle they can't contend with that and rather than to deal with it now you just want to kill me slander my name he's a false prophet slander my name because you can't contend with the scriptures no Gentile can because the father never gave it to him. Keep going. Let's see. Let's see. 38. I speak that which I have seen with my father. I speak what I see with my father. And ye do that which you have seen with your father. There's your line of distinction right there. It's two ways that you can view things. You're either viewing them through the eyes of Israel or you're viewing them through the eyes of a Gentile. And I'm seeing things through the eyes of my father. I'm speaking the things through the eyes of my forefathers, the ones that they put on boats and march into every nation on the planet. You are seeing things through the eyes of the ones that put our forefathers on boats. 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Now you tell me. You tell me. You look at all the Christian churches in the world. You look at all the pale faced heathens that's at the helm of the Christian churches of this world. And you tell me if they doing the work of Abraham. You tell me if they doing the work of Abraham that the scripture is talking about. 40. But now ye seek to kill me. A man that have told you the truth. And then every time somebody rise up and start telling you the truth of scripture, the first thing you want to do is start slandering and blocking people. Which I have heard of God. And this did not Abraham. Yep. 41. Ye do the deed of your father. You do the deeds of your fathers, brothers. If you up under them umbrellas and you operate according to the doctrine of Baal and the, and the doctrine of Balak and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans that you've been taught at the hands of the heathen, you are doing the deeds of your father. And it ain't but one way to be released from that is that when you hear the spirit, the 
the day we hear the Father's voice. Don't harden your heart thinking that you know everything, that you got it all together. When you hear the Father's voice coming out of his word, he said, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. This said they to him. We be not born of fornication. Now, when people don't have no defense for what they say they believe in, they always try character assassination. So instead of them, they can't continue no. Now they're going to attack his character. Well, we be not born of fornication because they knew that his mother was promised to have a child and be a virgin. So they now attack his character by calling his mother a whore. And even in the Jewish town, they teach their children, those fake Jews, that these pale-faced heathen Christians are important. They teach their children that our Messiah, his mother, was a whore and had a baby by a Roman soldier. That's what they teach him. They teach that he is from a bastardization. Yeah. Family. That's what they teach. Yeah. That's what they teach. So they said, we be not born to fornication. We have one father, even God. We have one father, even God. 42, Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. You see? For I proceed forth and came from God. You see? Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. You see? If, if, you, if you was really of God, you would love your brother. You would love your brother. Because your brother proceeded forth from the Most High. And he ain't told you nothing that was his. Everything that your brother is coming to present you with is coming to present you with the scripture. So that goes back to the Messiah. I proceeded forth from the Father. And I came not of myself. I didn't come telling you anything. But I came showing you what was contained in the scripture. This is what he was saying to the pale faced he back then that said that they believed in him. We're such a gullible people. 43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Why can't you understand the speech? Even because ye cannot hear my words. You can't hear my words. 44. Ye are of your father You are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. And the lust of your father you will do. So let me tell you something. I don't care how good your intentions are. If you are a Negro descendant, if you are the descendant of the slave and got the blood of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob running in your face, and you can't stand up and declare that when you got all the biblical, uh, uh, the biblical and historical evidence to prove it, and the whole world knows it. You can't do it. But he was heard from the beginning. From the beginning. And the bold not in the truth. And the bold not in the truth. Because there's no truth in him. You see, Christianity don't have no truth. Where did it come from? Where's the book? Where's Christianity scrolls at? Everything, everything that that Christianity had to even begin to compose itself came from Israelite heritage. They don't have nothing. We don't have nothing. It is not the religious order that matters no way. It is holy book that matters. That's the only thing that matters to me. I don't care nothing about your church. I don't care nothing about the organization. I don't care nothing about none of that. The only thing that matters is we got this book right here. And the person that got this book and got a love for the Father's word to walk according to this thing, he is the one that Father is talking about. He ain't talking because you go somewhere on Wednesday, on Sunday morning, on Sunday evening, and you a part of an organization, you ain't talking about that. You can follow it, but if you're not connected to this book, you identify yourself. All of that is in vain. Go to Matthew, chapter. Read the ninth verse. Look like I froze. Matthew 15. I froze. Uh, I froze. It froze up. Yeah, it froze. I can't get nothing. I can't get 
God damn. I'm freezing. I'm freezing all up too, man. I'm too close. Let's see if I got better reception now since we ride. <laughs> But Facebook is killing me though anyway. It's killing me anyway. I'll go back and look at these videos. Oh, man, I can't even understand what I'm Facebook, saying. Facebook uh, update. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, when you start talking, talking about them pale faces, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you know, they watching every time. <laughs> okay, read, read it, read it. First okay. off, nine. Matthew 15 and 9. No. No, start, start the first verse. Alright, Matthew verse 15, one. first verse. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees. Yeah, here come religious leaders. Here come to church. Which were of Jerusalem saying, mm -hmm. Two, what do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Here come the church leaders. Want to know about science. Why these dudes ain't washing their hands? They, you know, they don't even come to Wednesday night Bible study. They don't come to choir and hurt or something. You know what? That's a bunch of nonsense. Let's see what the Messiah said. Three. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God? You want to know what tradition? You want to know why they transgress tradition? The Messiah want to know why you transgressed the commandment. Because the traditions of men make the word of God have no effect. And so these people were guilty of not doing none of the commandment. Just like many of our church brothers. You, you know, you wonder why a person don't come to Wednesday night Bible study. Well, why you, don't, why you got a pork chop hanging out of your mouth? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But what good is doing? For me to come to a Wednesday night Bible study, it ain't teaching nothing but falsehood and tradition. Yeah. You see? Now skip Whoa. down to verse 9. Because okay. this is where we at. It's a cap off. Matthew 15 and 9. But in vain they do worship me. In vain do you Christians worship the Most High. Teaching for doctrine. Te for doctrine, the commandments of men. The commandments of men. Because Christianity is built on the tradition of men. The traditional paganistic ways of the Romans and their forepants incorporated all of these different religions and melted down into a religion and called it Christianity. That's why you're cutting the Christmas tree down. That's going to scripture. Do not learn where to eat for one going with us and cut a tree down and bring it back and deck it with silver and gold and pass it with everything move. The custom is vain. Nevertheless, these are things that we do in Christianity. Your tradition when, when it's Easter and then here come the egg and the bunny rabbit and the Easter egg hunt. And y'all see nothing wrong with that and you won't part with them things. Here comes St. Valentine's Day. Here comes all of these heathenist, paganistic things. He said, in vain do you worship in me. Because you're teaching your people these traditional things as though they are my commandment. Like the Sabbath day. Like Sunday the Sabbath day. Worship. Sunday worship. When it's plain and simple, that is the first See? day. See, this stuff is undisputable. And this is why our brothers get mad and and then want to try to assassinate your kill your influence because you don't have a leg to stand up when it comes to the truth of scripture. But the only reason why you can't deal with it is because you will not uh, stop looking through the, the eyes of Gentiles. Them Gentiles is a laughing. We are laughing stock to the whole world, and thou shall be an astonishment, a reproach among the nations, a byword and a proverb that they see thee shall shake, shake their head. And that's what's happening to the Israelite right now. The nation see you when you go in the Chinese shop to buy some hair weave. The nation see you trying to cover 
Run, run away from the royalty and they shake their head. Oh my god, he got the blue stuff in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Same thing. You know, when you try to learn to wear the heat and walk around in skinny jeans and try to be gay, mm -hmm. a punk that's destroying, that's destroying the army of Israel. And he then is telling you, it's okay to do it. It's okay to do it. Walking around wanting to be hugged up with another sister. Destroying the army of Israel. And you think that flames ain't chasing after you? All because you've been sitting at the feet of the pale face heathen. And then somebody will want to come along and say, Oh, and it sounds like a racist. He sounds like a racist. <laughs>